Hey, it's Bob Tuscan here at the Free Your Mind Conference, and look who I found. It's Freeman. How are you, buddy? Good to see you, Bob. Good to see you as well. Of course, Freeman went on the Magical Mystery Tour with Miss Emily and got to stay in all sorts of places with all sorts of friends, which must be nice. He came down to Florida, said hello there, and uh, it was great to see you. Um, this conference was a special one, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to mention that Kathy O'Brien took me aside and said that she doesn't do talks in the East and that they probably won't do another speaking engagement after this. Say that, yeah. But she told me that something in her heart told her that the Free Your Mind 2 conference was the most important thing for her to do. And I feel like that's for a reason. The synchronicity involved with that is, is so important. And she was someone that early on really alerted us to how there are victims of this mind control out there that are blowing the whistle on things that we once saw as kind of conspiracy theories. You know, they, these are real people that have gone through this, that have witnessed the satanic or ritualistic abuse. Yeah, it's incredible when you open that door how many people you actually run into that have stories. You're like, oh my God, this is too much. Yeah. So this conference really, what I want to see is the video. I want to see after the conference is done, all the videos put together because we all spoke from outer sources. No one knew what the others were speaking on and yet every piece was one piece of a puzzle that just perfectly fit together. And I think it's going to be an epic film. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. There was complimenting aspects of everyone's talk uh, from the more esoteric to the more health-based stuff. It, it all overlapped and interrelated to one another and uh, it's definitely going to be a spectacle to watch for those who didn't get to experience it firsthand. There's something though about being here for, you know, with these people and getting to meet them and, and coming together. It, it's an awesome experience. Oh uh, yeah, waking up to coffee with Fritz Springmeier and you know having lunch with Kathy O'Brien. Yep. It's been a, a surreal experience. Couldn't be more. It really uh, this thing has been epic, and I'm so excited to have Dan Fogler show up and have the Don Peyote screen. Sure, that's going to be tonight. We have the after party for the whole conference, and we're going to see Don Peyote in its full length. You haven't seen it yet, right? I haven't seen it. And Freeman, of course, will be in the, the talk, and uh, or in the film, rather, and uh, I'm looking forward to that as well, because uh, I, we saw the preview after your talk last night. Right. and. It looks far out, uh, I think is a good way to put it, in I a wish, good way. <laughs> not to sound too, I don't know what, but I wish I could have been in the audience for my talk. Yeah. I wish I could have seen it from their eyes and experienced, because I I know really, what you mean, though. I put my heart and soul into that, yeah. and it was, I, I hope it was as epic as my vision of it was. Give the viewers a little preview for those that haven't seen it and haven't gotten a chance to watch it online yet. Well, it was uh, an explanation uh, into all of the different secret societies, or at least the main players, and uh, expressing the ideas of the occult going back to the Egyptian priest magicians, bringing the mark of the beast to us today through people like Russell Brand and Katy Perry. I discussed the ideas of uh, human cloning and mind transfer technologies leading to Im immortality, using Michael Jackson as my example. And when I had coffee with Fritz Springmeier, I'm sitting there and he says to me, well, Freeman, your, your stuff on Obama has really just shocked me because do you know what I'm talking about, Fritz Springmeier? And I said, no. And he says, I'm going to be talking about human cloning and mind transfer technologies leading to immortality. Interesting. And I'm like, no way. Is this know? transhumanism? Is that another name for yes. this? Yes, yes. Transhumanism, the idea of transferring your soul into another body or into a robot or even into a hologram, as uh, my, my lecture showed. Have you seen the 2045 campaign stuff at all? No. When I get back home, I, I want to email you this. It, it's a, an NGO that is, has set up, and they've basically laid it all out, how there will be avatars, and there will be this transhumanist push. And this is sort of a mainstream entity that, that's talking about this openly. So right. I think this isn't just science fiction, folks. This no. is reality. And I tell you, I, I seem to be shifting worlds because Andrew Bishago told me that he didn't remember his experience with Obama until we talked. Until hmm, really? I, yeah. So you, you brought that free for him? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then with, that was at the last conference, I remember. Right, at the last uh, for your mind. Yeah, we all had dinner that night. There was Alfred Weber, Andrew Bishago, Jan Irvin, all these crazy people in one area having dinner after the conference. 
What a heck of a night that was. <laughs> it was great. And this has been as legendary as that one. Uh, this sure. one maybe even more so. I think that we just made history right here in the heart of history of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now before we came to the conference, I listened to a show that you filled in for Freighter X for, and you had Packy on. That's the name, Packy? Yeah, Packy Savinos. Packy Savinos. And you talked about the Jesuit connection to things and the, the new pope that uh, just came into power, the, the Jesuit pope that just came into power. Is this something that you're continuing to look into, and do you think that's a relevant tidbit uh, for people to look at? Absolutely. Uh, with well, First of all, with the Pope quitting, the Pope resigning, the Queen of Netherlands uh, stepping down and the Prime Minister of Australia quitting, I was having visions of the movie 2012. I'm like, where are all these elite going? Why would they give up such positions? You know, the Pope hasn't quit in 600 years. Um, but what I would have been following and what was really important and critical about my work was that I would have been following Pope Benedict through his uh, studies of the Illuminati to the point where he came out and exonerated the Knights Templar of all the heinous acts that the Catholic Church had charged them with under torture, uh, which is homosexuality, obscene rituals, uh, all of these uh, things, and speaking to a severed head known as the Baphomet. So Pe Pope Benedict found a document that had been lost, once again 600 years, same amount of time since Pope, the last Pope quit, he found a document misplaced in the Vatican Library right. that then exonerated the Knights Templar of all wrongdoings. And then he shut down the Vatican Library after 500 years of service. Mm -hmm. Well, the critical point here is that with Pope Benedict stepping down after exonerating the Knights Templar and we move in a Jesuit Pope, the, the <clears throat> you can expect things to start to really manifest at the Alaska Mosque or at the Temple Mount because these are the groups that have been factions around the Temple Mount since you know the Temple Mount was considered King Solomon's. And so I would fully expect there to be some major implications at the Temple Mount probably this year. And uh, to, to just add to that, Pope Benedict was the very first Pope to ever visit the Temple Mount. Really? As I was saying that this was going to happen, he visited the Temple Mount. Now we have the Jesuit Pope, who of course is from Argentina, uh, Buenos Aires, which brings in ideas of meteors to me because I'm a Stargate or a, you know, right. a Starship Troopers fan. But he, the, that is the Nazi region of South America. Sure, that's a good point. That's a very good point. I, of course, I, Pope Benedict was a Nazi youth from Bavaria. Right, so. exactly. I, I hadn't considered that. And you talk a little bit about the, uh, the Vatican's uh, astronomers. Yes. And, and some of their recent uh, disclosures, which, which I find interesting. Well, when I first heard of Benjamin Funes, uh, a Jesuit as well, who's the lead astronomer for the Vatican Observatory, uh, it was him coming out saying that aliens are our space brothers and didn't suffer original sin. Now, I thought that maybe Reverend Funes was just an outsider, you know, someone just coming forward to say, you know, yeah, aliens are real. But this guy then turned out to be the head of the Vatican Observatory. He's well connected. He's not just some uh, crazy guy. He's no, he was attached to CERN sure. as they started to work with the Vatican CERN uh, conjunction. Right. And on top of that, he put together the first ever Vatican uh, conference on extraterrestrial life. And this, of course, was quickly followed by the Royal Society's conference on extraterrestrial life, which included Henry Markram, who made the blue brain or mind transfer technologies. Uh, Henry Markham was in the Royal Society's talk, along with uh, the uh, UN's ambassador to extraterrestrials, which is Mazzy and Offman. So we have all of these, the UN has identified an uh, alien ambassador, the Royal Society has chosen their alien ambassador, Andrew Bashago has identified Jamie as his intergalactic ambassador, my wife. Your wife, okay, <laughs> I was going to say. And uh, the NASA has announced that Linda Rothschild is their uh, alien ambassador. So well, geez, all of this is now coming up. And I expect this Jesuit Pope to start to come around with that, that new, because that's part of the plan. It was asteroids and aliens. So they're, they're legitimizing this concept. Well, folks, we're going to have to look at the presentation and Freeman's website for more details on this stuff. What's the next project for you? Well, I have two more conferences, doing one in Hayes, Kansas, and then I'll be at Conspiracy Con for June 1st and 2nd. Uh, Sonia Barrett will be there as well. Great, great. Uh, excited about that, so we'll give a few more presentations. And then, uh, Frauder X and a good friend Chris are moving to my hometown in Kansas, and we are going to start this new TV network, which we might call Freeman TV. 
and uh, we're going to start to push our stuff out to Apple TV, Google TV, and uh, Roku and start to hit the masses because what we see here is the, the preaching to the choir. Right. And we need to get out there. So we're trying to get on Russell Brand. We, Russell, if you're listening, we want to be on your show, talk to you about the Mark of the Beast. And, uh, you know, we want to get out to the masses. So that's the next thing we're yeah, shooting Yeah, I mean, for we Apple get TV stuck right in there. the box and we're preaching to the choir a lot, which is good because we, you know, it's We good strengthen to, the choir. We strengthen the choir, but we also have to ex expand our horizons and get to people that are not yet informed about what's going on necessarily. So I'll look forward to that. I'm sure I'll want to be participating course, in that in some in. capacity. You're in. So uh, I'll definitely look forward to hearing more on that project and so much more with Freeman. Freeman.tv or FreemanTV.com. That's the one. FreemanTV.com. Okay, I knew it was FreemanTV.com. If you're awful like I am, it will be in the description under the YouTube video. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank Thanks you so much. much.